Hello, I am Dr. Kayleen Asbo, cultural historian for the Santa Rosa Symphony. And I want to invite you to a series of concerts that celebrates the power of love and friendship. On February 9th, 10th, and 11th, the Santa Rosa Symphony will present love letters. In 1835, at the Gewand House Concert Hall in Leipzig, Germany, a 16-year-old maiden with slender white fingers and dark, serious eyes took the stage. Under the baton of Felix Mendelssohn, she began to pour out her heart in a passionate piano concerto that she had begun to write when she was only 12 years old. That young maiden was Clara Weick. And by the time she took the stage, she had already been concertizing for half of her life. It was her performance of Beethoven's Appassionata that moved audiences to tears and poets to pen odes. She was one of the most famous concert pianists of her day and had partnered with Niccolo Paganini. Her fame was such that a young law student became enchanted. He wanted to follow in her footsteps. And so one day he knocked at the door of her home in order to seek piano lessons with her father, Friedrich Weick. That young man moved into her house and together they practiced piano side by side. Though she was only 11 at the time and he was 20, the two became fast friends and eventually they fell in love. During the daytime, they would work on music and composition. At nighttime, the enchanting young man, Robert Schumann, would regale Clara and her brothers with stories of ghosts and goblins. That candlelit night in Leipzig in 1835, the music that Clara played by heart was her own piano concerto, a work that was filled with her burning and yet unconsummated passion for her secret fiance, Robert Schumann. Their love is a story for the ages. It endured hardships of separation, a lawsuit in order to marry, the creation and the death of children, and Robert's own eventual insanity. Through it all, Robert and Clara loved one another. They wrote music back and forth. They quoted one another in their compositions. There are literally hundreds of letters and hundreds of pieces of music inspired by their love affair. Clara was Robert's muse, his editor, and his champion. And it was under her slender fingers that his music first made its way into acclaim in the world. Robert had a lifelong passion for literature and he remained under the spell of those supernatural stories. It was a natural fit, therefore, that he would be drawn to Lord Byron's story, Manfred. It depicts a troubled young man who tries desperately, desperately to forget things from his past by conjuring up seven spirits. Lush and dramatic, it is a work that has been described as haunting. Haunting might be another word that one could use to describe Mendelssohn's Third Symphony. It was conceived of during a time when Mendelssohn went on a grand tour of Europe, beginning in Scotland. As he wandered through the landscape, the wind, the lushness, the green moss, evoked a sense of wonder inside of him. Mendelssohn was particularly drawn to Holyrood Palace. It was the place that Mary, Queen of Scots, had awaited her execution. And here, amidst its wild grounds, with the ruins of the Gothic chapel, Mendelssohn felt the stirrings within of a melody as wild and as tempestuous and brooding as the landscape before him.
The sketches of this initial melody came quite quickly. And here Mendelssohn said he had the beginnings of his Scottish symphony. It took many years for the other parts to work themselves out. Movements that go back and forth between gloominess and sunniness. We experience the latter in this scherzo, which is a beautiful evocation of Mendelssohn's light, buoyant, and joyous spirit. Our concert opens with the bright and buoyant overture in C major, penned by Mendelssohn's equally talented older sister, Fanny. Fanny Mendelssohn had also been a child prodigy like Clara Weick Schumann and her brother Felix. But the time that she lived in felt that it was unsuitable for a woman of the upper class to take the stage. And so while Mendelssohn went on his world travels and tours, Fanny stayed at home, where she tried as best she could to live up to the dictates of her father, who decreed that a woman's true work was in the home with her children. Fanny's musical spirit, however, continued to pour forth. She wrote over 200 works. Most of them were only ever performed in the salon of her home. It was here in her living room where guests would gather and they would hear works by her brother Felix, but also works that she had written. While she was preparing to conduct one of his oratorios, Walpurgis Night, a story itself about the supernatural, Fanny had a stroke, collapsed, and died. Upon hearing of his beloved sister's death, Felix himself also had a stroke, one from which he never recovered. Within a year, the two siblings, who had been soulmates since childhood, lay buried side by side. This February, just in time for Valentine's Day, we invite you to come to Weill Hall to hear the music of both Clara and Robert Schumann, Felix and Fanny Mendelssohn, in a program that celebrates how love and friendship have the power to even reach beyond the grave. I'm Dr. Kayleen Asbo. I invite you to join me an hour before each performance as we will dive more deeply into this extraordinary music. To hear more about Felix, Fanny, Robert, Clara, and other love stories of the Romantic Age, I invite you to join me here at the Petaluma Historical Library and Museum for Musical Mondays, an ongoing lecture and recital series. I hope to see you soon for this celebration of music and love. Thank you.